folks could um, introduce themselves in the chat. Say hello, type your name, let us know where you are Zooming in from. Uh, and maybe if you wanna share like your favorite moment of bike to school day, uh, would love to hear some of those in the chat. So I'll make a little note and, and put that in. If I'd been more prepared, I would have had a thing to copy paste into the chat this morning instead of typing in real time. But it's all right. Dave, I do really appreciate that you have like your up to date background from yesterday as bike to school day. <laughs> Bring in the energy. Bright and early. Uh, welcome for folks who are just joining us. Since folks are still trickling in, I'll put a note in the chat, but feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, your names, your pronouns, where you're, where you're calling in from. And if you have a favorite moment of bike to school day yesterday, would love to, would love to see those. Oh, bike repair happening in the chat. My favorite. <laughs> Well, we are uh, almost five minutes past the hour, so I will go ahead and get us started, but please feel free to keep introducing yourselves in the chat uh, and, and share those bike to school day memories. Uh, memories seems like a funny thing to call them since it happened yesterday, but <laughs> um, I will go ahead and get us started. Um, welcome everybody to the May 4th uh, Minnesota Safe Routes to School Network call. Um, what is the Safe Routes to School Network? We are a network of dedicated professionals from communities, uh, organizations, agencies across the state that are working on safe routes to school uh, because we want kids to be able to walk, bike, and roll to school safely. Um, we do this through partnership, uh, through advocating for policy changes, through improvements to the built environment, uh, and it's a really great, great group of folks. I am so excited to talk to you all every single month. Uh, today, uh, we are already through the welcome part of our agenda, um, then we're going to have uh, the MinDOT uh, update, uh, which is actually going to be Kelly Corbin from MinDOT is going to be jumping in on this today. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time recapping Bike to School Day. And then uh, I'm excited that we have Dylan from the Minnesota Department of Health to share with us uh, some information from the Minnesota Student Survey so that we can all be thinking about how to use that in our work. Um, this is not technically a save the date, but the, the network meetup uh, for the uh, Minnesota Safe Rest of School Network in early June, registration is now open. We'll make sure to drop a link in the chat before we close out for the day. So with that, uh, I will stop sharing and I will turn it over to Kelly for the MinDOT update. Thanks, Kelly. Sure, sure. Let me see if I can. Oh, uh, you just need to let me share my screen. Give it a go now. Alrighty. Cool. Um, so yeah, Dave and I put this together, a uh, little MinDOT update for y'all. Uh, the biggest thing is our boost grants are coming due soon. So I know so many of you are working on them. We had really great turnout on our webinars. Uh, there's a lot of excitement and ideas from across the state. So I can't wait to read them. Um, so May 17th is the big deadline. Give yourself some time to um, prepare to upload them. You might have been working in a Word doc and then they go uploaded on a different system. So um, technology stuff always happens. So give yourself some time for that. If you have any questions about needing some additional um, step scores for private schools or charter schools, or um, you want to run something by us, feel free to reach out to Dave or I. The sooner the better so we can get you an answer in a timely fashion. Um, things pop up, we're out of the office, or we um, are working on some other contracty stuff now. So we want to make sure we have time to get back to you. Um, 
if you can't uh, apply this year, think about next year. Uh, so use this as, as an opportunity to maybe start those conversations with some partner schools and let them know that there is money for non-infrastructure, um, you know, planning assistance. Both of those will be open again next spring um, and the infrastructure in the fall. So it's a great way to start those conversations, plant seeds. Otherwise, keep working on those applications. Um, this has been shared, uh, I think, around, but just a, a heads up that the Safe Streets and Roads for All federal funding um, out of the, the infrastructure funding is, is open. Um, so you can just Google uh, Safe Streets for All. Um, I think it's SSF or SS. 4a.org or something will get you there. Um, but talk to your um, city or county engineers to see if there's any opportunities around you. Maybe you want to focus on schools or maybe there's some connections outside of where your school is. That would be helpful to get kids where they need or want to go. Um, so take a look at that. Oh, thanks, Alyssa, for dropping the link. Um, again, uh, just a couple days left for the um, partnership with Target um, around, not Target, partnership with the twins uh, around uh, student patrol and crossing guards uh, to celebrate all the hard work they did this year working in rain and snow and cold weather and maybe some heat if we get uh, the spring keeps rolling here. Uh, so we want to celebrate them. Um, this opportunity will also be open next spring. So as you're maybe doing a work plan or planning ahead with your Safe Routes team or, or whatever, it might be something to think about how can we really encourage and grow our school patrol or do a better job of rewarding our crossing guards and a Twins game might be something that's a good idea for them and it might not. And you might want to get creative about some other local opportunities. Uh, but just putting it out there. If anyone has gone um, to these days uh, with their school or um, whatever, let us know how it went. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to get there this year, but I'm, I'm interested in how it, how it went for you. The big thing that we have to talk about is yesterday was bike to school day and it is so fun to see the numbers of registrations have gone up post uh, COVID era where it was we were doing bike to anywhere day and, and you know people weren't in school so we got 162 registered schools and we know more people participated than those who registered online so that number is probably bigger. We had the most bike to school day events than any other state in the nation. So that's pretty cool. Thank you all for doing that and doing all the heavy lifting at your local levels to make that happen. Um, it's really exciting uh, about, I think there was over, I should double check, but over a thousand schools across the country um, who registered. Um, so it's, it's exciting to see the power and the movement and the energy in Minnesota around um, bike and walk to school days and safe routes to school. So that's just evident of it. Um, and if you didn't register your event, you can still register your event and get counted. Um, that gets you um, reminders for next year to keep registering so that you get some of our, our goodies that we mail out um, or any other information about bike and walk to school days. I want to promo the poster contest because um, you still have until tomorrow to sit, submit a poster. And the reason you want to do this is it's a fun ask for kids to talk about um, what um, biking makes them feel or why they like to bike and draw that a picture. Um, it can be a classroom activity. It can be an activity that you do at a tabling event. Um, it can be something that you have your kiddos do or your neighbor kiddos do and then snap a pic of it and email it to us or um, if you have questions on how to get it to us you can reach out to Dave or I to make that happen um, and this is an example of last year's winner so uh, just make it fun and happy and we'd love to see that we still can use a lot more submissions so um, there's still time you still have a great chance the top winner in the k through three and the four through four six get a bike rack for their school in addition to those top three prize winners get a really fun um, prize pack from quality bike products which is the helmet uh, water bottle bike lock belt and lights and we're really thankful to Dero for giving those bike racks which is something we haven't done before or at least in a long time um, so earning your school bike rack is a pretty rad thing to do and a great way to leave a legacy thanks Dave for dropping links I appreciate how we've swapped places here <laughs> Um, anyone have questions about the poster contest, feel free to drop it in the chat box. Um, Dave is the wizard at this and can help you along. 
And what I wanted to share is just some of the photos that I found off social media. Um, I know a lot of you are on the call, and so I might see if I can get folks um, from these cities that were featured to talk about it. So this is in New Ulm in South Central Minnesota, and I think I saw Bree on the call, who's the Safe Routes to School coordinator. Bree, do you want to go off mute or drop in the chat box um, anything that you wanted to talk about this? Yeah, um, we we added a new location for one of our walking school buses this year, um, and we weren't sure how that was going to turn out because we've done it in the past and it didn't have a good turnout. Um, we ended up tripling the number of kids <laughs> that um, it was kind of a snowball effect that happened um, and just a really fun energy um, from from that new location. And then uh, the, I think the other thing I put in the chat too was around our, we we convinced our new mayor um, to uh, come in. And she um, she was she had so much fun. She volunteered. She wants to be a part of the walking school bus program that we're getting started for next fall um, on a routine basis. So um, I don't know. It was very fun. <laughs> we had a good good day for it. That's awesome. Uh, it's super great opportunity to get elected officials involved to see the energy and remind them that this infrastructure is used by kids who can't drive. And so biking and walking is really important for for them to get around our fabulous communities. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing, Bree. Um, and then on um, New Ulm Public Schools and Heart of New Ulm has some really great photos on social media, um, or we've shared all these photos on our Minnesota Safe Routes to School Facebook page. So if you want to see more photos, um, a lot of them have a fuller description of what happened for those events. If you just want to soak in all the feel good from yesterday or start to think about walk to school day in October and planning ahead, it's a great opportunity there. Um, anyone from La Crescent Hoka Elementary Schools in Southeast? Um, I love this photo of the 76 kids who biked to school. You can see the full bike rack in the back. You can see all those happy faces uh, who enjoyed this summer or the spring day and are ready to learn. Oh, Andrew, that's cool. You got some history there. Um, so they've been doing safe routes for a long time. So it's fun to see that their, their program is growing. Um, this is in Crookston, and we got some full bike racks up there, a beautiful banner that I would love to see elsewhere. And I think this was um, Safe Kids Grand Forks, and I think there's someone on the call. Do you want to talk about some of the work you did in Crookston? Sure. Uh, can you hear me? Sure can, Tina. Hi. So um, our group at Crookston is small but growing. We have a boost grant that covers that. So we're talking um, bike helmets. Uh, actually, next week with those guys, we're going to have um, bike education, as well as we're going to be talking to them um, use, uh, about bike safety and having a rodeo out there. So unfortunately, we didn't see a whole lot of helmets yesterday. Um, but there's a lot of room for improvement, but lots of smiley kids. And at 7 45 in the morning. I'm not sure how they were so peppy, but they really were. Um, but we were just really excited to celebrate with them. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. And it's fun to hear that Bike to school, school Day was kind of a launch of other efforts and other bike safety education that's forthcoming in a, in a bike rodeo. Um, so it's a good way to kind of think about the event day and make it um, make it more of a sticky factor and keep keep the good times rolling. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is down in, in Faribault. Um, it's just a fun picture of all these kiddos who were riding to their school, um, even got some adults and parents involved um, and a lot of helmets I see. I think that was a requirement. Um, Josh, this is in your neck of the woods. Do you happen to be on the call? And is there anything you'd like to share about this event or helping the school organize it? Maybe he's not on this call, but he's usually a frequent flyer on it. All right, um, really fun to see this. Um, all these kids happy and getting to school. My favorite thing is after such a terrible spring to see all these blue skies. <laughs> Um, so this happens to be in Dave's area. Dave, do you want to talk about your very last bike to school day with your kiddos? Yeah, I didn't. You snuck this in, in to the slide deck. I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see this the first time through. Um, <clears throat> we had a great. We had a great bike to school day. I, um, what do I want to say about it? You know, our our bike train there on the left is that's been a daily occurrence now for a few years. 
<clears throat> but everybody showed up on the same day, so it was it was full. And uh, as were all of the racks at the school, we we have um, maybe a somewhere between 50 and 100 uh, spots for people to park their bikes at uh, Howe School here that's on the right. All of those racks filled up as well as the fencing, you know, next to the racks had probably another 20 bikes that students had to lock there because there was nowhere to put their bikes. Um, but it was my last year. My kid is going to be done. My kids are both done with elementary school. <clears throat> so it was, it was a bittersweet moment. But rest assured the bike ferry will continue right <laughs> <laughs> we'll see we'll see Hopefully. uh thanks for sharing dave yeah and if anyone has has questions about actually leading a bike train um or operating that dave's been doing it for a while so if you want like real true uh how it goes uh there's another way to reach out to him otherwise we have a toolkit too um, so many fun pictures coming out of Rochester, who had a really fantastic event launching their new bike fleet. Is um, Joanne or Dustin on to kind of talk about your event? And you got great media coverage too. We did. I'm here, Joanne. Um, so what we did with the fleet, we wanted to um, break that out and we, I, we really focused on one elementary school. Um, so the all the fifth graders from that school were able to do the bike fleet and go through the course and do a, a couple laps around the school. Um, and then 15 of the kids uh, from that elementary school who are going to a nearby middle school did their first uh, virgin run um, biking to that new school. And then they got a little, um, there was an ambassador uh, student biker who showed them the, you know, this is where you lock your bike up. And um, this is the tunnel that I use and that sort of thing. And then the assistant principal showed them around, like, here's your cafeteria, here's your, uh, you know, just this is the introduction to this school. So the mayor was there and, you know, a lot of hoopla. Um, so that was um, one way for them to see and actually experience that they really could bike to their new school next year. Um, so, so two things. I mean, one really encouraging that um, use of the new, it's a brand new middle school. So it's brand new infrastructure. In fact, the road isn't even done to the school yet. But to show them the way that there's a tunnel um, as well as a, a bike path that's kind of hidden. So it was a nice way to kind of uncover that for them as well as uh, use the bikes. Um, we had a new thing with our obstacle course. We also got a, um, a ramp. So that was uh, like really high anxiety for me that somebody was gonna get hurt, but nobody did. And the kids had a blast and it was a beautiful day. So it was a fun event. Thanks for sharing, Joanne. And again, a lot of these photos that were from the communities are just shared on our Facebook page. And um, Rochester um, had some great photos from the school, but the um, police department was there helping lead the ride and did um, a bike giveaway. And it's just a really beautiful story too. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, yeah, lots of good stuff coming out of Rochester. This was from Mankato, from the greater Mankato area, bike walk adv advocates who just kind of went around town and saw all the bike racks full at school. So um, there's nothing better than, than full bike racks. It just is a good reminder for the community that this is where kids are. Spring is here, bikes are out and about. Saw this too um, near Mankato, Mayo Clinic Health System. We always talk about building partnerships and, and our, our healthcare is a great opportunity. And if you're working in SHIP, you already have some of those partnerships. So um, kind of encouraging walking and biking and maybe it's not to school, but it's you know making laps when you get to school or trying to do some obstacles at home. So a fun kind of uh, broader event. Um, Wasika, they had, oh, I don't have it on here, but they had a lot of kids go out for a, a bus stop and walk. So that was really fun for them. Um, if you have anything more about this event, feel free to drop it in. And Thief River Falls um, had 60 kiddos uh, from the public and private schools participate. The photos were a little grainy, but 
um, you can still see all the happy faces and really, really full bike racks um, and maybe even some bike storage needs there with bikes hanging out on the ground. Anyone from Thief River Falls want to talk about how you got 60 kids out and about? Really dropped my Minnesotan accent there. Okay. Um, and I know Will is here. Will, do you want to kind of talk about some of the um, the event you did? I saw in the chat box you didn't have much lift to do, um, and then the bike safety that's been going on this this time. Yeah, sure. So we have bicycle education through the whole spring and fall, and we happen to be at Centennial Elementary School over bike to school day or walk and roll to school day, uh, as we as we call it here. And uh, you know, this was a part of our bike education unit. We unit we take a bike field trip, uh, and this one happens to go past a local park. Uh, the really nice thing about it for me, though, was that when I got back, uh, I found that there, you know, I, I kind of went in between classes, needed to wash up a little bit, and I found that one of the common areas in Centennial Elementary School was full of about 45 bikes. Um, and I, uh, you know, I'm kind of transitioning uh, towards the end of the grant that pays for my role, and I'm trying to transition the schools to do more of this work. And it was very cool to see that the muscle memory had been built up for walk and roll to school day, and that uh, this kind of event can happen uh, after after the schools learn how to to really organize them. So uh, it was very cool. Thanks for sharing, Will. Yeah, just so many good stories coming out of Richfield too, and you're a wealth of knowledge for folks to reach out to as well. Um, so again, bike to school day, it's fun. The pictures are really uplifting and give me and many of us new energy for this work of making it safer for kids to bike and walk and really encourage you to think about how to leverage this event, the pictures, the stories, maybe the school had less behavioral issues yesterday or whatever it may be, and really talk more about those like policy systems and environmental changes on how um, you can really pull from this. Maybe you had some elected officials there, got, got made really great media coverage that you want to send to your city county engineer or your elected officials and just give them an FYI. Um, so start to think and brainstorm on how to leverage this event. And I think Alyssa or Julie, I'll hand it over to you because I know you had some uh, additional bike to school day photos to share. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Uh, so you you had shared some of the ones from uh, from Kirkston, but I wanted to, I wanted to share these ones also. Um, I don't know if there's anybody from the Brooklyn Center Community Schools on the on the call, um, but uh, I don't know. I think this is super cool, both because there are ways for people who are like the kiddos who are walking and biking to participate, uh, but also this question of like what is or would be your favorite part of walking or or biking or rolling to school is just a, such a great way to like start to bring in folks who didn't actually bike to school as they're as they're looking around and seeing like oh my gosh everybody biked today so um, I am on if yes talk about it I want to hear you talk about it <laughs> so um we did have so first of all it's middle and high school our elementary school campus the infrastructure is still not super supportive of um students walking and biking to school safely so we tend to have um, skittish admin when we try to run some of these events at the elementary school, but our middle and high school campus, it works really well. And that admin team is all about it. And so when we do it with middle and high school, it always looks a little different. Um, we always have to be a little bit more creative about how we approach it, but the students this is this banner of letting them vote with the stickers. First of all, the custodians love it. Um, because otherwise they're picking stickers up off the floor or off of the lockers. And also the students have gotten used to it now and they really enjoy this idea of being engaged in something and it makes them think. And we usually have somebody posted there to like create conversations with them and that always makes a big difference. So even if they don't have, even if they don't have the access to walk or bike to school and or the interest they, it still continues to raise awareness and they do have dialogue about it after, at least on that day. So it's raising awareness if nothing else. That's so awesome. Thanks, Michelle, uh, for jumping in. And, and uh, it makes sense to me that the custodians are very happy with this as a solution. <laughs> 
This is why stickers aren't allowed at the state capitol. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and just take a minute before we move on to see if there's anybody else on the call who has their own bike to day school day photos that you want to share and talk about. Uh, Kelly put a note in the chat. Obviously, Kelly pulled what she could from social media, which I thought was a very impressive amount of things uh, to pull together on short notice, given that bike to school day was yesterday. Um, but if there's anybody else who wants to share out, um, no pressure, but I, I think we would all love to love to hear your, about your successes um and and what you learned for the day i'll do one of my signature awkwardly long pauses christina hi yeah we just had ours today out of um because there was scheduling issue and so we took advantage of the fact that it was on may 4th so may the 4th be with all of you um happy star wars day um so we had ours a star wars theme and um we had um about twice as many kids as normal show up and costume parents and costume superintendents and costume myself i was princess leia you can see my buns um so uh we had a blast most of the kids were on bikes and um so i think there was some learning there of going okay now we got to get our bike train you know uh volunteers really geared in because before maybe we'd have two bikes so yeah 14 people normally in the past we had over 30 this morning in cook county i'm in grand marais sorry to introduce where i'm from yeah i'm in grand marais minnesota so the ship coordinator up there so big success um yeah and thank you for the um packet of uh resources it was really helpful Well, that is super fun, super creative. My spouse is like not a person who bikes uh, and loves Star Wars. Absolutely loves Star Wars. Like would go to that bike to school day event. Uh, <laughs> so I appreciate the, the creativity and bringing in folks who maybe like wouldn't see themselves as excited about bike to school day in that way. Yeah, we had some people come out and said that 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 the Star Wars theme is what brought their kid wanting, they were begging to go. So we'll see if, if this continues, but um, theme was theme was helpful for us, at least up here. So. Thanks for all everybody's done to support these programs. Amazing. Uh, we have a couple. I'll pause one more time, see if anybody else wants to jump in. Kelly's very good at talking through the long pauses, and I, I just sit here and make everybody feel uncomfortable. Uh <laughs> um, Cool. So I think we'll move on. Uh, but thanks so much to everybody. I feel like so energized and excited uh, from from all the share outs today and seeing all the photos of right there's just like so much work that goes into creating the culture to make bike to school day like a fun and welcoming and exciting event at all these schools and it's like always something to celebrate and there's always challenges. Um, but it's I think just like it's a great it's not a culmination because the work continues, but it's just a really great thing to be able to celebrate and see in real time all the work that you all are doing uh, paying off. So uh, with that, uh, I think I am going to move to the next item in our agenda, uh, which is Dylan, uh, who is going to share with us about the Minnesota Student Survey, which, um, you know, I think there's, uh, when we think about all of our work and the and the all the ease right um an evaluation uh that thinking about the broader trends of what's going on with students in our state and how do we think about how that relates to uh what's going on in our own communities is really really important so i'm very excited to have dylan um come and share with us today so with that take it away dylan i see i see your screen <laughs> excellent so thanks for the confirmation Alyssa. Uh, good morning, everyone. If we haven't met before, Dylan Gallos, I'm an evaluator at the Minnesota Department of Health in the Office of Statewide Health Improvement Initiatives. I partner with our active living team, uh, including uh, the evaluation of SHIP, and uh, with that is also included safe routes to schools. Um, I had a couple descriptive slides just about uh, LPH uh, SHIP at, at safe routes, just to know there are 57 projects statewide. Um, we have 29 community health boards in 30 counties. Um, I have a couple maps. I'm happy to share the slideshow, but I want to get to the Minnesota student survey data just to make sure we have time for that so that there's time for the discussion on the back end. So 
uh, in last year's Minnesota student survey, for the first time, we had questions that were about students' travel behavior. Uh, we asked them, uh, they were asked in two ways about travel to school during a typical week and travel from school on a typical week. And those were asked of uh, fifth graders and eighth graders, or level one and level two, as they call it, and only asked of students who are attending classes in person. And the travel modes that they could have listed included walking, biking, a school bus, a family vehicle, carpooling with another family, uh, taking public transit, and then other means that were generally active, skateboards, scooters, inline skates, and things like that. And so uh, students could mark any of that applied. So those who are multimodal would be able to have that information. Um, I coded it for analysis to focus on either to or from, thinking about as uh, infrastructure is developed or programming is developed, we want to know if, if 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 kids are going to or from. It doesn't necessarily matter as much which. We need to have that path available for them either way. And knowing that students sometimes have uh, different housing situations and may or may not take the same means to or from, daylight in and safety or other reasons that travel behavior to and from can differ. And it's a typical week, so it may not be every week that they do this. But this was a general uh, this was a general scope of what that looked like. So um, I'm going to go mode by mode first and then talk a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going to go fairly quickly through this. So at, at the end, feel free to ask questions and follow up on this. So uh, walking, 13.6% uh, 13 th of students reported walking to or from school during a typical week. Um, this one seems off, but 6% of students reported biking to or from school during a typical week. 65% uh, reported uh, taking the school bus to or from school during a typical week. 57.5% uh, reported traveling in a family vehicle. 6.7% reported traveling to or from in a carpool. And then a less than uh, less than a percent reported taking public transit. And when we think about that this is elementary and middle schoolers, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, and then 1.6% reported uh, using some other means that are like skateboards, inline skates, scooters, things like that. Uh, when I put it together, what I, what I calculated was that 16.85% of students reported any of those three types of modes, thinking about biking to school, walking to school, or those other modes like inline skates, skateboards, uh, rollerblades, and scooters. I suppose inline skates and rollerblades are the same thing. Um, a couple other findings before I go into some demographics are that about 67% or two thirds of students uh, reported taking only one mode to or from school. Uh, I counted the number of responses that they had, but then others are multimodal. The most common was, uh, I want to say like 18% uh, reported two modes. There weren't a whole lot of students that were you know, three or four or five modes or anything like that. And about the same proportion of students uh, did used active transportation to or from school in elementary school, that was about 16.4%, and in middle school, and that was about 17.2%. Um, this this next uh, the, the, I was going to show then a few other tables uh, by urbanity the uh, the county in which the school uh, the student reported uh, took the survey in uh, based on that uh, also by gender and then also by race and ethnicity there are so many ways that we can look at this the, the Minnesota student survey has a depth of data I'm also aware I have a limited time and there's other agenda items so what we saw was that. Um, approximately 5% of students reported, uh, so it was higher in, uh, in large metro areas. I'm going to double check on this. I think this might be an outdated slide, so I'm going to skip on this one. I think this was outdated. But uh, looking by gender, uh, we have... Uh, so, and gender was asked in the Minnesota student survey, similar to travel behavior, where students were asked to list all gender identities that uh, that they had. So students may or may not have listed, you know, two, three, four different gender identities. So uh, I'm, I'm listing each identity separately, just so we can look at this travel behavior. So about 5.6% of students who identified as agender, um, 
reported active transportation, about 4.8% of uh, students who are identified, who identified as cis male reported active transportation, 7.4% uh, of students who identified as transgender male, 5.4% uh, of students who identified as, uh, as gender fluid, gender non-conforming, or gender queer. About 3.1% of students who identified as uh, cis female, 9.1% uh, of students who identified as trans female, 5.7% who identified as non-binary, 9.4% who identified as two-spirit, 4.9% uh, who identified as questioning or unsure, and then there was an identity not listed, and it was about 7% of those. Again, there was a widespread of students who identified in each gender identity, and so I, uh, looking at this, I'm a little surprised that the numbers are so different than that 16.8%. I'm going to double check those calculations, but I'm not surprised that there is variability between them, especially because the sizes of each, each group also differ. And then last, by race and ethnicity, uh, about 15.13% of students who are American Indian, are identified as American Indian or Alaskan Native, uh, reported active transportation. 11.4% of students who identified as Asian or Asian American only uh, were 11 point, or reported active transportation. 12.7% of students who identified as Black or African American only uh, were using active transportation. 16.5% uh, of, of students who identified as Hispanic or Latino uh, reported using active transportation. 13.8% uh, of students who identified as Middle Eastern or North African uh, reported using active transportation. And then 17.7% uh, .7 of students who identified as Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander reported active transportation. 17.6% of white students reported active transportation. And 20.35% of multiracial students reported uh, using active transportation uh, to or from school on a typical day. Um, that's all the data that I assembled for this presentation. I, I'm happy to go back. Uh, just in full transparency, I discovered an error in my code yesterday. So when I was calculating the active transportation variable, something was was off. And so I recalculated those yesterday. I'm not sure if the if the tables I presented for uh, for county and by gender uh, re reflected those updated numbers. So I have a little bit less confidence in those, but those trends were about the same uh, regardless of, of, of those specifics. And I'm happy to rerun that really quickly, but I'm also happy to go back to some of the higher level things about the travel behavior. I imagine that's more important for today's conversation than some of the specific subgroups, and I can report those updated tables later. Um, so with that, um, I imagine there are a couple minutes for questions before we get to the other discussion item. Dave, you and I came off mute at the same time. I had a question, but you can go first if you'd like. <laughs> um, well, I was just going to uh, thanks, Dylan. I know you put just a ton of time into making this um, happen and also to analyzing all of it. Um, I was wondering, you know, there's uh, a lot of data that you just shared. Um, when you were looking this over with an evaluator's eye, could you speak to the group a little bit about what, what stood out to you um, in some of those breakdowns by kind of race or vanity or um, gender? Yeah, certainly. So I think one thing that, that really surprised me when I was looking at it was um, one thing that didn't surprise me was the difference that we saw by urbanity, where uh, it was, I want to say the, the smallest proportion was among the suburbs or the, yeah, the, the, the fringe of a metro. It was, it was one of the lowest ones. And just thinking about biking, walking infrastructure um, and, and how people just generally travel in those areas and, and where they are and aren't, that that was one thing I noticed, and I was I was glad that there was the ability to to look at it this way. I'm not sure how much some of these categories translate. Uh, just sort of thinking about you know large central metro, medium metro, and small metro. Uh, but that was one thing. Another thing that that jumped out to me it was just the complexity of of particularly with that gender variable. Just knowing that students. Um, 
uh, just, just how to describe that and what that looks like. Um, and uh, I'm stumbling on my words right now. It's a really good question. That, that's always a sign of a good question when I'm stumbling on my words. Uh, but with, with gender in particular too, just thinking about who feels safe going to school, who may or may not feel safe going to school and what that, what that one looked like. Um, it would be interesting to know what it looks like with some of these uh, aggregate co combining, so sort of like that geography combined with some of these demographic variables. That's not always possible with the Minnesota Student Survey, and it's a deeper level of analysis. But those were those were some of the things. I, I too that elementary and middle schoolers were were using active transportation at comparable rates. That one also jumped out to me. Yeah, I don't think I would have predicted that. Oh, yeah, thanks, still. I, I want to echo Dave's thanks, Dylan. Um, as uh, as I've told people on the call previously, as an English writing major, I'm very glad that like numbers people exist. Uh, it's not not my not my thing. Um, yeah, Dave and I guess, has a question too. Sorry, go, go Kelly. Go, I didn't go. know if you were transitioning. <laughs> I guess no, I, I was. In. I wasn't, but okay, yeah, got so, it. Um, Dylan, so the early slides um, talked about uh, typical week. Was there um, more definition on what typical week is? I'm just thinking from bike to school day. Like we had some kids who maybe bike or walked for the first time, and now they're going to give it a try a few more times, and maybe through the year they bike or walk five days. We still want to make the infrastructure safer, easier, and more convenient for them, but it might not be represented on here. So, like, how do we frame that as we're using this data to tell stories in communities? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so, so the reason they asked it about the typical school day uh, was that the Minnesota Student Survey team really thought that students who were in, uh, say, shared custody uh, may not go to school the same way. Maybe they're with one parent uh, one week and another parent the other. So trying to get at what all the ways they might do that. Um, but to your point, students who are newer to it uh, I, I aren't necessarily going to be reflected here. And then it's a point in time. So uh, I want to, I'm, I'm trying to remember when the Minnesota student survey is administered, but I, that that could make a difference too, just sort of in terms of thinking about when it when it comes out, when, when programming happens. Uh, in terms of how you would frame it though, I think it's really about, uh, all the ways students may travel, uh, may travel to or from school, um, and knowing that this is at least some of those trips. Uh, you know, one thing that comes to mind for me in terms of a talking point is that it doesn't matter so much whether a, you know a student walks to school one day every two weeks or every day, um, you know, rain or shine. Uh, it, they need to be able to get there safely, regardless of that. And just knowing that that infrastructure is used, period, is important. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, I think I have one. It's like kind of kind of an observation. I don't really know what the question is exactly, but I, it was it just struck me as as you were talking particularly about the gender um, section, right? That like um, in some right, it struck me that like uh, the data showed that like um, trans kids were more likely to take an active mode, a walk walk biker role. Um, and then just sort of thinking about the depth of like, like what, how do we make sense of that? What does that mean? Right. Is that because, um, they love walking and biking or is that because they're in like a social situation wherein like they're trying to avoid being on the school bus in order to avoid being bullied. Right. And like the, you know, all of the sort of qu qualitative experiential things that, you know, will, will drive this, these results and just how there's, you know, there's like the work that all the folks on this call are doing to like know their communities um, know what's motivating kids and families to make choices about how they get around, right, is like, that's an important part of, of all of this data and making sense of all this data, uh, certainly like reflects my experience as like a, a queer person who knows like a lot of queer people who bike, <laughs> there's definitely a big subculture there. Um, yeah, but I don't know, that just struck me. And I don't, I don't know exactly what the question would be. But I, I just like, I resonated with you, Dylan, saying like, this piece of the data is really, really complicated. And we, you know, there, there are a lot of ways, things that could be driving it. 
Thanks, Alyssa. Yeah, I, what I would say to that is, uh, so I want to double check the numbers, uh, you know, just generally to make sure before being too confident in that. But what I will say that we saw is that uh, bullying was also strongly there was a, there was a clear uh, association between the number of, of days students were bullied and their likelihood to uh, to use active transportation. So students who were bullied more frequently, a greater proportion of those uh, students were were uh, using active transportation relative to students who were bullied less frequently. And there are a, a great deal of questions about bullying in the in the student survey, but I imagine that could be one reason of them. As a fellow queer person, uh, that also uh, motivates me to travel that way sometimes. So I, I, I can definitely relate to that sentiment. And I wouldn't be surprised if that were one of them. And one of the questions in the Minnesota student survey does ask about both gender presentation in bullying, as well as gender identity in bullying and sexual orientation. So I imagine, so it would be possible to go deeper with those questions for sure. That is, uh, I appreciate you being like, oh yeah, we were collecting data on this. Smart evaluative people have already thought about this and are already asking about this. So uh, that's, that's, you know, not, not, not great, but glad that we have data about it. Full credit for those questions goes to the Minnesota Student Survey team, but I am glad that they asked those questions and they're open to this data being used for purposes like this. Um. Cool. I think, uh, Kelly, you were going to, um, I think, jump in with one more thing before we sort of open it up more broadly for like questions and discussions for just a couple of minutes before we close out. Um, yeah, be I... Before you do that, I'll just say thank you again, Dylan. Uh, really, we need evaluation experts like you. You are a very important part of this work. Alyssa, Will did look like he came off a of mute and was getting ready to, to say something, but. Oh, Will, should mute. we put you on the spot? Nope, it was an accident, but Dylan, you rock. Thank you. Um, all I was going to do is, I, we've talked about this, I know I put it on ship base camp, um, talked about it with some of the RDC planners and just wanted to walk you through like, how do you get this data for your school? Um, so it's on the um, MDE data center. And I was just going to pick on Will. So it's funny that <laughs> he just mm -hmm. popped in. Um, but kind of what you look for is you can look at your district or county level, which might be helpful if you are um, local public health and work at that county level and you have multiple schools or if you really just want to focus in on the school district that has a lot of excitement around this work. And then you pull from all these public school districts that you want to pull. I picked Richfield. The bike walk question was only in the 2022 survey. So in future years, you will be able to track trends, which is going to be really exciting. Um, you can look at past years if you want to see some of the other questions and track trends that way and um, look at a school level and then grade five is where these questions would have been asked and so um, school is the big one there's um, demographics you can look at mental health you can look at a lot of different factors but if you want the travel one at school and these are some of the things we talked about bullying and harassment and educational engagement teacher student relationships perception of safety which um you know, there's a couple questions here you might want to pull out if you are sharing with uh, whoop, sharing with the school stakeholders or at your safe routes committees. Um, and then I'm getting there. Here's your travel to school to and from school. So really rocking it in Richfield with 11% walkers, 5% bikers, and two and a half percent of rollers of some kind. Um, so if you can't do can't get your schools on board to do um, student tallies to get that data, you can pull from it here. This could be great data to pull for grant applications to us, to community organizations, to others, um, data to share with your school leaders, um, elected officials, put in some of your bigger reports, um, something to use, and hopefully we'll track trends and see how it is. And then, like Dylan was saying, you can cross-reference some of this stuff and pull from those other categories. Maybe um, I know there was some interesting stuff here of um, if you miss full or are part of a school day, one of the questions here is um, if you didn't, you missed your ride or you didn't have a way to get to school. And one of the top things from the 2019 survey is um, one of the biggest reasons kids miss school was this. They, they didn't have that transportation too for whatever reason it is. So um, 
might be another piece to talk about. So anyways, I will drop the link on the data center again. So you can go in there, encourage you to take 10 minutes, look at the data for your area, and then start to think about how it could be used for your work. And I'll stop sharing. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so we've got uh, just a few minutes left, and I think I want to open it up to the group, uh, see if anybody else has any questions um or uh observations i'm gonna put a couple like prompts in the chat uh thinking about what is resonating with you in this data what are you interested in learning more about uh or how might you envision using data in your this data in your work uh would love to hear from at least one or two folks on the call um and if the silence goes on too long i will pull a jill and call on somebody uh still bring the jill chamberlain energy into this call even though she's not facilitating anymore so And I think I said already, but if anybody has any specific questions for Dylan, uh, obviously, please jump in with those as well. I guess I'm interested in looking at that data to see where, um, how the rural schools compare, because the smaller schools in rural settings, the the streets are very safe around the school. So there are a lot of walkers and bikers, um, but then the majority of the kids are bus just because they um, cover such a big territory. So that's one thing I'll be looking at. Um, and then of course, the thing that is the most uh, problematic is the kids that are eligible for busing that don't choose to take the bus, but they are have those individual cars that line up around this school. So to try to actually compare what data we have at the school for the number of kids that are um, eligible for busing and then how many actually take the bus will be of interest to me. New data, I like it, thanks so much. Thanks, Joanne, and I, I love hearing about how you're thinking about like merging different data sets or, or how those might integrate. That's tricky work and, and also really important. And this is Karen from SHIP in West Central Minnesota, and I have been using that data to compare what's in the Safe Routes to School plans that many of our school districts have had. And then I wanted to pull the data um, from the Minnesota Student Survey for, I'm helping the Pelican Rapid School District apply for a boost grant. And they were one of the schools that didn't answer that question. <laughs> so, so it doesn't work as well as I had hoped this first time, but um, that's only one school district out of the many that we looked at. So I like that we added this to the Minnesota Student Survey. So thank you. Thanks, Karen. And like a, also a good data point to be able to go back to that school community and say, hey, uh, we could have used this. This would have been really great. Um, the next student survey will happen. So it can also be a motivator for folks. So uh, I see a couple notes uh, in the chat. Interesting one from Sarah. Uh, I'm curious, Dylan, if you have any thoughts on this, um, that uh, they see kids selecting other for Uber, Lyft, or taxi trips. Um, and that getting rolled into that like other category. Um, and if that's something, Dylan, that you or others have, have talked about, or if that's still emerging. This is Dylan. So uh, thanks for that, Sarah. What I would say to it is that, you know, the question was worded in terms of those active or with those active transportation modes as examples, but to your point, other can include anything else. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anything in the data that allows us to elaborate further. Let me double check in the code book if there isn't a question around what else that other is, but otherwise I think there is less to have less confidence with those caveats. You know, one thing that we could do in our analysis, uh, since other includes those, is to uh, include just biking and walking, and then also including other to see, you know, how those things, how those, how those frequencies differ, because that is a caveat of, of the, those other type categories. So thank you for that point. Yeah, I think I would just say too, like if you are maybe know your know your students, like I would say that is probably true for a lot of our high school students. But like in an elementary school, that's probably not happening a lot. So you can like just think about 
who your student population is and what you know about how they're getting to and from school and maybe think about that when you're interpreting it. Well, thanks, Sarah. Um, we got time for maybe one more set of comments, observations, questions before I wrap us up. So I'll see if there's anybody else. I have to like page through because there are enough people on the call that there's more than one page. <laughs> which it's very nice out today, at least here in Minneapolis. I hope it's nice where the rest of you are. So I appreciate you all being indoors on Zoom uh, when the weather is like 65 degrees and sunny. <laughs> cool. All right, I think I will move us towards closing uh, so that we can end on time. Um, uh, and I will share the screen. So um, just a reminder, we do not have a june network call um uh, instead we're having a meetup uh so it'll be june 6th um at 8 a.m it'll be in minneapolis uh there is no cost uh and we will feed you we're gonna uh have a lot of really cool stuff corey from the national safe routes partnership who was on last month's call uh will be joining us for a keynote we have a great panel of folks lined up uh to talk about uh uh sustainability in safe routes, the perennial question, how do we fund it? How do we sustain it? How do we keep from burning out? Um, we're gonna be doing uh, uh, um, an, uh, a walking tour with Alta in the afternoon. Um, so I'm very excited for the day and I hope to see many, many of you there. Um, I will drop a link in the chat in just a second uh, when I am not screen sharing. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a good time. I hope to see you all there. Um, Dave or Kelly, am I missing any like highlights from the meetup that that I should highlight for folks so that they know why they should be there? Dave will be there. Kelly will be there. You can say hello to Dave and Kelly. <laughs> I mean, there's a happy hour. I didn't catch if you mentioned that part. I feel like that's a that's a draw. <laughs> no, I did not. The, ha the happy hour is optional uh, at, <laughs> at around 3.30. We're not going to do the happy hour at like 2 p.m. or anything. So. <laughs> Um, so we're not having the, the network call, but we'll see you hopefully on June 6th. Um, and then in July, we'll be talking about summertime planning for fall engagement. We'll be midway through the summer and already thinking about when school starts again in September. It hasn't even ended yet. Uh, can you believe it? We're already thinking about it. So, um, that is what I got for today. Let me real quick grab, unless Ju somebody else has put the link in the chat. Oh, Julie did. Great. Thank you, Julie. Julie's always on the ball doing all the admin invisible things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, Julie. Yeah. Um, no problem. Cool. All right. Well, let's wrap up. It's 1059. I hope you all get outside. Enjoy the sun. Celebrate your bike to school day successes. And I will see you all in June. Take care. <laughs>